Hey everyone, this is Rod White, and you're either listening to or watching The Rod White Bow Show. Welcome to The Rod White Bow Show. I've got on the show today a very special guest, Aaron Snyder from Kafaru. Aaron, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, but spends almost in excess at times of 200 days in the field. And to talk to someone who has that kind of experience and continues to have that kind of experience year in and year out and understand what you need from a very specialized item that we're going to talk about today, backpacks. And, and most importantly, and those of you who are in the 60 day elk training class know that the backpacks and the boots are in my mind, the two most important things outside of your bow that you're carrying with you. So it's super important. And I'm, I'm really thankful to have Aaron on the podcast. So um, unless I screwed something up, Aaron, there, would you, uh, give us a little background on, on yourself and, and what you do at Kafaro? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for having me on. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I pretty much do all the design research and develop de development marketing for Kafaro. Um, they kind of all t tie into each other because I'll design something, go out and test it, the R and D portion, take photos of it while I'm out there then come back, use the photos for marketing and then tweak twist or whatever the, so yeah, if I don't go in the woods, it's kind of like not showing up to work. So it's a good position to be in. So yeah, I do uh, a couple hundred nights a year in the, the wilderness and I get to, you know, I hunt for about four months straight. So I, I do get to spend a lot of time outdoors. And most of that is with, you said wilderness, most of that is with a backpack on your back. You're living out of it, correct? Right. Most of those, I'm more of a backpack hunter. Actually, if you need advice for hunting beside the road, I suck at it because I don't have any spots that are close. Um, the majority of it is backpack hunting, whether it be a 5, 7, 10, 12, 14 day uh, hunt or in like British Columbia. We're in uh, BC uh, quite a bit this year. We've got three hunts up there and those are all horseback and then backpack in from there. So it's always some kind of um a logistical nightmare whether it be on our back airplane helicopter horse or whatever else in the end of it we're hiking in with a pack on our back well and i'm not sure if you agree with the statement uh i made earlier but i feel like the backpack is i mean without a backpack you can't go back in there you can't stay for extended periods of time um i i'm I, I, although we haven't hunted together i would assume you hunt pretty similar or i hunt pretty similar you do in that um, when I go into an area, I, I don't know if I'm going to be there for seven or 10 or 14 days. I, I go in and if I find animals, great. If not, I'm pulling out, I'm going somewhere else. So I'm generally packing as if I have seven to 10, seven to 10 days in there. And for me, that's around uh, 65 to 80 pounds I might have in my pack, which may be in excess. But um, I'm not running an ultra, a lot of high and technical gear. But the areas that I do spend a lot of uh, money on and focus on is is my backpack and my boots and my bow. Um, so... One of the things that happened when I came back to Western hunting, which I hadn't done for a while, um, just due to a number of life circumstances, was um, I got uh, I was buying some equipment for a buddy of mine who worked for me as well. We both went together and we came out and killed a killed a bull and we're packing it out. And on my way down, um, I guess maybe it's why I'm so particular about boots and backpack is I got this really cheap backpack because before in the past all we had that I can remember was Cabela's Alaskan two packs, external frame packs of clear Alaskan twos. Um, and I came out with this first ever, first time I'd ever used one, an internal frame pack and I got completely wrecked. I mean, wrecked coming out of Idaho and it wasn't a huge, I'm going to say it was maybe five to six miles in, um, to get in the, the, the elk out. And I think what a lot of people who are going out and a lot of people who listen to my podcast are going out for the first time, um, they are going out for the first time and, and they may not understand exactly the mechanics of a pack and why it's important to have one that's A, fitted to you and B is is built for exactly what you're doing. And when I got back into hunting, after being wrecked with that, um, or I said back into hunting, back into elk hunting, and getting wrecked that first time coming out with a bull, I called up Kafaro last year and um, talked to probably, I don't know if it was Frank or who I talked to, but super nice people um, that I dealt with there. And you guys walked me through a process that was a custom fit process. I explained, you know, where I was going to be hunting, the, the environment type I was going to be hunting, which, you know, may not be overly important, but what kind of weight I was going to be carrying on my back and, and uh, that was a cool process to go through. And I don't think a lot of people know that that process exists for a backpack, let alone know how important that is. And I'm not thinking on Alp backpacks by any, any means. It was just with an internal frame that wasn't um, fitted to me whatsoever. I threw it on my pack like I was 22, 23 years old again. And just I was just going to pull on a china closet thing 
rip up the mountain and go. And it ruined me at 38 years old. <laughs> so yeah. when I called up, it was just a super great experience. And it's part of why I wanted to have you on the show is because I wanted to, um, hopefully you could expand on, so I'm not a backpack expert, but I hopefully you can expand on how, what kind of factors are you looking at? Why is it important to have a, a pack fitted to you? And why is it important that someone go through that process like they do? I can follow on the call up to, to order something. Gotcha. Well, uh, the big thing that people don't understand, or maybe it's hard to um, equate, is the, the the size of the person. Everyone's taller, shorter, longer legs, whatever the case may be. You know, they've got a big uh, big butt, basically, a big curvature to their back, or whatever. All of those things come into play for comfort, um, and we were able to adjust the pack for each specific person to make a more comfortable experience. All that means is you can keep hunting longer. You can pack out an elk and come back in the next day. Um, do you have to have the most comfortable pack in the world? You don't. But what we try and do is take the person's sizes, for one, the way they hunt, uh, meaning whether it's three days, five days, day hunts, however the case may be, guide, whatever, um, the terrain or area they'll be hunting in, take all those things into an equation and then that's what we try to form them into when we when we build build the product. Um, this morning, for example, uh, I'm going to grab a frame here. We had a, a lady, Liz, that came out from Fort Bragg, who we, we had custom uh, fitted a pack for. She's five foot. She's not to be too personal, but very busty. Um, and she just couldn't get a pack to fit her. And so she, we we were able to get her to fit get a pack to fit her with 80 pounds comfortably and for a lady that's 115 pounds it's pretty hard to do um and those are the things with this frame that you look at we make three different frame heights and what that has to do with is the length of your torso the taller you are the taller of a frame you need because this piece of webbing here that hooks to the shoulder strap is called a load lifter and what this does is you're wearing the pack. As you pull on this, it's not really lifting anything other than its shoulder strap off of your shoulder, which then transfers the weight down to the belt or your hip, uh, your hip bones. Your hips can handle a lot more weight than your shoulders. So if you can imagine, if you're six foot six, and this frame uh, is only at the top of your shoulders, when you pull on this load lifter, it's not lifting anything. You're basically wearing a duffel bag with shoulder straps because all the weight's on your your shoulders so the key is to have the ability to transfer the weight to your hips at whatever weight you like generally 65 35 is the the mix right you want 65 on your hips 35 on your shoulders now that just has to do with frame height and then the length of these shoulder straps these shoulder straps can be adjusted you know pretty significantly we have more or less seven inches of adjustment we can go up and down so let's say in fact we had a guy from iowa yesterday six foot tall 300 pounds legit buff like huge and i'm trying to like get it out of him because he's kind of shy dude how big are you finally he just sent me a photo so i could see him and i'm like oh yeah we're going to need to do some, some tweaking. I'm like, you are not normally built. Because he, he told me his dimensions. He's like, I've got a 36-inch waist. And I'm like, repeat that? You're six foot, 300 pounds with a 36-inch waist? Well, he's got 25-inch arms. Um, which 25-inch arms are, I mean, not normal in uh, like 34-inch quads or something ridiculous, whatever it was. So we need, we take that into consideration because the curve of this is for me, right? The curve, the curve of this, right? Well, this dude's going to have like an arc around this giant back he has. And so we can form it to his back, basically, um, the, the, the curvature of the frame. And then these shoulder straps, we can extend to go around his giant barrel chest. Um, well, the, the next thing is the, the hip belt. And that's pretty simple with the hip belt. We make multiple different sizes. And that's just... You know, if you're super skinny, you don't want it to bottom out. If you're if you're a little short for your weight or girthy, you don't want it to, you know, like only go halfway around your body. So when when you order a pack from us, you enter your height, your weight, your your inseam, your waistline, the curvature of your back, all of those different things. And with this frame, we can exchange shoulder straps. We can actually adjust on the fly the load lifter angle 
And what this is for is like, well, how tall are you, Rod? Uh, six, six, one. Very yeah, so we're about the same same height. So if I was day hunting, I would probably attach this to this bottom loop because I want more of a load stabilizer. I don't really want like a bunch of um, of load lift going on, meaning I want most of the weight on my shoulders for maneuverability. I don't want it rocking around. But if I kill something or I've you know got my full kit in there, I want to adjust it back to the top, which – all it is is an open-ended buckle. Um, now it's up to the top, and I'm able to get that load lift or that shoulder uh, shoulder strap off my shoulder. You can do that all that stuff on the fly, adjust these shoulder straps up and down on the fly. And where you are coming from is the majority of companies out there don't do that. If you go, no, nothing wrong with um, – some of the packs that you can buy in, in Cabela's or Sportsman's Warehouse or wherever, um, but they don't have the manpower or the the knowledge to be able to fit people. That's just not what they do. You go in there and you buy a pack, and you know you, it, it's a good product, but it's also half the price of ours. So you're not going to get quite the adjustability of it. Um, and then the other thing too is we're actually all made in this building right here, like the needle, the thread. We're very compliant. So 100% of our stuff is all of the components are American made as well as the labor. And that's another reason that we are able to do really whatever we want to do because it's built right here, all the R&D and everything else. So if I've got somebody that comes in who's five foot tall and has a 54 inch chest, I can go modify what I need to fit him when needed. So um, those are the big the big key points, you know, shoulder strap adjustment, frame, height. Uh, load lifter angle adjustment, the, the correct circumference on the belt, and then the curvature of the stakes, and w and we can do all that. Well, and I know in one of your videos, excuse me, I watched last year, I think it was, uh, you were mentioning about the, the angle, that load lifter, depending on the weight, there was kind of a degree that you measured, I think. What I do with mine, as soon as I got it, was I just put marks on, because it came already fit to me in theory, basically, so I, I went ahead and marked those, which is a magic marker on the straps. So in case I got them out of whack and, and when I started to play with it and I started to, you know, I, I use the word training loosely, but, um, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not running with a pack or anything like that. But it, when it got to the mountains for sure, and I had the big loads on it, I was, it, it was most comfortable right there. So that was like, to me, that's really cool having in and being a service-based industry where I've, I've always been, you know, guiding or, or managing farms for guys. I've always had to take care of everything. And, uh, guys have appreciated that and I've just got myself, I guess, in that head, in that mindset. And so whenever I got a product like that from you guys, I was like, wow, this is totally above and beyond anything that I've worked with before, for sure. I mean, especially that, you know, I just bought a pack out of the shelf, like at Shields, like you're talking about, that's where I got my pack at. And, um, man, I don't know that I would use that thing for anything, but carrying kids stuff around right now, because it just didn't yes. fit me properly. Yeah. And that's the thing. And I will say the one, um, the one thing we do, I mean, as you know, like I give my phone number out to way more people than I should. People call me at 10 o'clock at my, night. It drives my girlfriend crazy. Um, I tell people, I mean, it's not, not a bragging thing, but if I'm on the side of a mountain glassing for sheep or mule deer and it's a Tuesday and I can answer the phone, I take guys' phone calls on a sat phone or on my cell phone and, and uh, you know, try to, uh, I mean – I hate leave somebody hanging, right? It's something innate nature in me that I would just have to answer the phone to talk to them. And so we try to offer the best service. Frank's the same way. Corey, all the guys that work in here, customer service. The one thing I would say is when you don't call, that irritates us because I've met people at shows like, you know, I tried your pack. It didn't fit. I sold it. And I'm like, did you call and ask? Um, because a few key adjustments can make a world of difference. Um, we had a guy come in yesterday and his shoulder straps, for whatever reason, I don't know if we sent him out that way or he, he goofed around with it, were lengthened for a guy that was like 6'6", six, six, and he's 5'8". And he's like, my pack's sagging. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at him, I'm, I have no doubt it is. If he wouldn't have called, he would have worn that a little bit longer. But, you know, I bought an overpriced pack. It's just not that comfortable. You got to make sure and get it adjusted correctly to get the full uh, you know, the full boat out of it. I mean, we can be made in America, great customer service, but if you don't call, you're not really getting anything out of it. So the fitment is, is huge. Um, and the, the other thing too is, for example, um, if you, 
with these this frame system in your case you got a nomad 2 we just sent you if you want to go on a the nomad 2 is kind of a wing pack it'll work for two three four nights or whatever but let's say you want to go on a sheep hunt you don't have to buy another frame you can pull that nomad off and put like a fulcrum is a huge pack we make you can pop that fulcrum on so you can use one frame in multiple bags uh, it makes it very versatile you know a lot of guys get addicted and they'll buy two, three, four frames and have one for training, one for whitetail, trying to get into the whitetail market a little bit more. Right. One of the things that going to Alabama a few times now, you know, I may, I may have made fun of bad boy buggies originally, but hanging like 14 <laughs> stands in a day, just going 400 yards back and forth, trying to monkey around with lone wolf, you know, screw in steps or muddy, but whatever I'm doing, it started to suck, so I could see how a, a, a good um, tree stand packing or a comfortable tree stand hanging packing pack, whatever you want to call it. it there, I haven't found one yet. You know, we looked, and so we've been working on one for that reason. When I was in Alabama, I had like basically everything just jerry rigged with tree steps kind of strapped on and the lone wolf I, I had a lone wolf which hit me in the back of the head so and that's what is more of a niche for us you know not everybody's going to pay six hundred dollars for a, a tree stand pack but for us it would be a very comfortable pack that can hold you know a 40 pound 20 pound whatever stand tree steps screw in steps the whole nine yards and we're trying to really key in on 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 anything that we do as comfort and durability is, is the, you know, at the, at the pinnacle of it. Well, uh, the interesting thing about whitetail guys I've noticed too, is that, um, they, they don't put the, if I do a bow school out West, for example, I, I have way more participation and people have no problem paying what they pay for a bow school because when I go to anything I do, it's bow school, especially, I want those folks to be really knowledgeable on their own. They don't, they shouldn't depend on me after I leave them. That's the idea is they can build a bow at an ultra high level and so whitetail guys in the Midwest, um, I'm probably going to get slapped with comments on this one, but in general, the mentality is I don't need to go spend a bunch of money on things because at all, in any aspect of bow hunting, because I'm just shooting a deer in there in my backyard every night. Um, yeah. When you get to the level of which I think me and some of my peers that, that are, you know, we're very much on the whitetails. Uh, I'm hunting a lot of public land, which people don't realize, but I hunt uh, some private land too. And. And when I'm not guiding or I'm not managing properties for people, I'm actually, I carry my stuff in and out with me every time. So everything is 100% on my back and it's 100% on my back when I leave. And so a pack system like that, it'll be cool to see what you guys come up with because um, I have a, I think a fairly decent pack system, but it's just, I'm using a high school backpack for the most part. I used a sick pack a little bit last year. Um, but when I climb in, I climb out and I have a system where I have my stand and my pack and I was looking at the frames. I think I messaged you earlier in the year. I was thinking, I've been thinking pretty hard on it, but just got tied up with a lot of other things about how I can make a system or, or work with a system where I can go in and out with my stuff. Because the more efficient you are going in and out, the quieter that you are, number one is obviously a giant deal, but the more you can go in and out of there with less stress on your body and less sweat, sweat equals bacterial, or bacterial equals plus the hunts. And so the easier I can make that for me to get in there as quietly as possible, almost everything I have is bag and pocket kick. Um, when I get up in there, I, I usually, I have lone wolf sticks and I have a rope system. I completely rip the buckle system, everything completely off that rebuild everything. Um, and then I, once I get up in my stand, I hang my stand and I climb it and I hunt. And if I'm taking somebody, they're in the same system. Basically all they have to have is the, is the, uh, tree stand. So for now, you know, we're basically holding those stands on our hips on a hook. If you know, Sure, you know Jim Hole Jr. Kind yeah, of showed me a little bit of that, that system. I hunted with him once in Alberta a long time ago. A really good friend, great guy, and uh, he used that same kind of system. Got me thinking along that side. So I'm excited to see what you come out with that because I think even if you're uh, if if you're at all spending money on going on a hunt anywhere, whether it's for whitetails in Kansas or you're or you're heading out west, I mean to be able to have a system that's super slick, easy, quiet, and makes it easier on you getting out with less sweat, especially when white comes to whitetails, dude, that'd be phenomenal. Huge. But it's amazing how it's a uh, subjective, I guess. You could say, um, you know, I was like, who's gonna my buddy from Alabama, I'm like, who's gonna pay six hundred bucks for a pack? And he's like, Well that tree stands four. Right. Hey, you got a point, right? Well, then I you know, you get into the arguments of um I mean, I hate to bring up any forum or any Facebook post. <laughs> um, some people will post, 
you know, talking like crap about Kafaru. Why would I pay seven hundred and fifty dollars for a for a pack? Um, I've used an Alaskan, you know, freighter frame two for twenty years, and it served me fine. And I have no doubt that's the case. But you know, if 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 you could take that person um, that's saying that uh, and do a Pepsi Coke challenge, meaning go into the Sangre de Cristos with me, gain and lose ten thousand feet in a day kill a sheep, come out the same day and have to turn around and two days later, go back in on another backpack hunt. I'm assuming you would pay just about any amount of money for comfort because we answer the phone all day long of guys that said, dude, I finally killed an elk last year and I had pack X. It almost killed me. Whatever money it takes, I'll buy your pack. Um, and not saying we're, you know, we're the only pack that will come makes a good pack, but some of the phone calls that we get, or I bought into this person's marketing and the pack broke. What do I need to do to get a pack of yours? Well, you know, there's, there's a reason why like that price tags there for some reason, same reason lone wolf tree stands, they're expensive. Well, it's cause they're really good. Um, I mean, there's no way around it. Not saying there's not other tree stands that are, they're good, but lone wolf and, and it, you know, way more about tree stands than I do. I've just had great luck with lone wolf and, I've had good luck with Muddy. I've, I bought a couple of those. But if, if I'm a person going into buying a tree stand and I don't know what I'm doing, me as a person, I'm a little hesitant to buy the cheapest one considering my life, my, my fat ass is hanging off the side of it. So I start to do some, you know, I do some investigation and, and usually that, you know, reversing it to packs leads people to a couple different companies because of the adjustment and the quality durability, things like that. Well, and I think uh, the thing too that a lot of people forget is I will talk to guys who will absolutely shake their head at me because um, I have probably a thousand bucks into my tree stand system yeah. and they think that's a lot. Well, they have 20 tree stands they got from Menards that were 50 bucks a piece and 20 sets of ladder sticks. That's yeah. $2,000. I think if I'm doing my math right real quick. <laughs> yeah. And they're all steel and they're all rusting away as we speak, because they're still sitting in the same place. Um, yeah. And there's another big advantage for me. I mean, I know we got kind of off the topic, but with tree stands, from a whitetail perspective, is I, I, if I want to go hunt an area, I don't think anymore necessarily, I have to be careful how I word this, people take it out of context, but if I want to go hunt an area, I'm going to go hunt an area that particular day, because I know that I either bumped a big deer in there, and I know he's going to be right back. I don't believe in the whole, let's hang out for three days and let it cool down, because in those three days you're gone, that animal has come back, if it's used to being in that spot and smelled everything you've done in there. So I don't let yeah. like areas cool down. I go right back to them and having the ability to go into an area because the wind switched, I can just jump into another tree. Number one. Yeah. And two, because I hunt a lot of public land, nobody knows I was there. It's absolutely impossible for somebody to tell that I was there unless it was raining and the leaves are kicked up or there's some other small evidence left behind like that. They're just not going to see where I've hunted. Um, yeah. And I use a lot of mapping of other people's stand locations. I'll go in and I, literally that's how I hunt public land for whitetails is I'll go in and I'll map out from the closest parking area to wherever the stands that I find are. And it's really easy for me to draw lines of how people get to the tree stands. And from that, you can almost create like a, like a heat map almost of sorts of where everybody's at. And then you find these little cold pockets and they go in there and that's where I, I hunt and I hunt all day long. But, um, the cool thing, I guess, for Kafaru, and I really wanted to get across to everybody, is whenever they call out to order, uh, uh, the experience I had that was I'm really thank, really appreciative of is whenever I called up, I got a pack system that, not just a pack system and a shelter, which maybe we can do some other time because um, we're getting short on time, but if we could do, if, if a guy can call up and order something and then call you back and say, hey, I'm looking for a replacement pack for whatever, you guys had all that data on me when I called up this year, that was really impressive. Um you know, I don't have to go through the whole process again, but anytime I need anything, and if I want to adapt it with Kafaru stuff especially, it seems like if I want an extra pack because maybe I get, I don't know, I picked up a new item that I wasn't going to use before. Like I used a 55, I think it's a 55 liter dry sack you guys have. That's where I put my clothes in. That goes in between the wings. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I had, you know, a smaller pack that I had inside of that that I folded up. And I just, if I was in a hurry, I would ditch it, throw off the wings, throw it out on my back and run after the much I run, but depending take off after a bull if I was on my way back and wasn't planning on stopping. Um, yeah. It was just a quick deployment system. And, and I think I'm going to use that guide lid this year uh, as a day pack. Kind of thing. I didn't even realize I could use that last year. Left a little bit. Um, yeah. I just appreciate all of the, all of the, I really appreciate a company that goes, 
above and beyond and, and fits things. And, and most of the time in the hunting industry, I see what you get, what you pay for, and you may not realize, but it's actually cheaper in the long run, paying more for a quality system, especially when it comes to packs, because, you know, maybe you come out with a whitetail thing that I can use that same pack frame I have, slot things in or not. Who knows what you guys have come up with, but um, you got a good, you got a great company, you got a great product and uh, it was an awesome experience. I just wanted to share it with everybody that, that follows me. Yeah, no, I, I, we, we appreciate you. When I saw the name, when you ordered, I'm like, Rod White, Iowa. wonder if that's Olympic gold medal winner, Rod White. I think I called you after that. Um, no, it might have been a little bit later, but either way, one way or another. And we, It's funny. Um, people think, oh, you only called Rod because called Rod it's Rod White. No. You can get, yeah, TJ Perez, who's, he's, he's literally had just started hunting and I saw a system he had ordered. I just wanted to make sure spot checking that I, we got it right. And I, I called him, he's a customer for life. Now he's a huge follower, but we try and do that just to spot check. Now, if, if Rod White or whoever else orders and I see the name, I'm probably going to call to make sure we didn't screw anything up, but we do the same thing with. When I say screw anything up, if you've never ordered our pack before, it's sometimes it's it is intimidating, I guess, because of the options and everything else. But we do that with everyone. I I would wager to say we talk to seventy percent of the people that actually order our packs. That's a lot considering how big we're getting. So we started with one customer service rep. We have five now, and uh, we we literally had to unplug the phones in this office just to do this podcast. We do try to have firsthand service or very quality service, and and yeah, man, I, it's great having you use our facts, especially if we do a a white tail pack because I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so I'm going to need advice from people like you know. So, well, I, I'm looking forward to it because I think uh, there's some really cool options that people don't have. I've been Mickey Mousing stuff together all this time, so. Uh, maybe you guys come up with some cool options that would solve some of the problems I I faced at least. Be cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly how my buddy from Alabama was. He's got a Mickey Mouse kind of setup going that <laughs> works for him. So, but yeah, it. Uh, it'll, I look forward to definitely showing you what we've got and getting bumping, bouncing things off you. Well, I know you have a ton of videos online about all the different packs and products. You guys really have a really extensive library. Um, that's super cool to go through for people who are choosing packs. And I know you can give advice when they call, but if people wanted to um, find you guys, it's kafaru.net, correct? Yeah, yeah kafaru.net. And then the um, we have kafaru underscore I-N-T-L is our Instagram page. And then kafaru international on Facebook. And then uh, we do a lot of photography or me personally. So if you want to see crazy kafaru photos, A-R-O-N-S-N-Y-D-E-R on my Instagram and between the photos usually gets people's interest, interest peaked enough to where they're like, wow, because it's a little bit unique of what we offer, what we do, and then, you know, goes goes from there. So, yeah, definitely look us up and uh, feel free to call uh, anytime. It's 303-278-9155 is uh, the only office line that I can remember right now, although we have several. <laughs> well, I better let you go so you can get them plugged back in. Thanks so much for your time, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. All right. Peace out.